Dan Johnson talking with Sebastian Heinz, who's going to tell me everything I need to know about Super Duty. What's what's the basic idea here? What's this all about? Well, the Super Duty is basically it's a Stoll CH750, uh, and the Super Duty is an add-on to that. And we've been producing that for over 10 years now. This is our CH750 line of airplane. It's very popular aircraft designed primarily around the light sport aircraft world. With the Super Duty, we said, you know, now that we have basic met out, let's make it a little bit even even more Super Duty in the sense that the limiting factors before with light sport are, are the weight factors and then, and then the power uh, accordingly. So we were able to put a much bigger engine on the airplane and to correspond with that, put a bigger wing and bigger tail section. So essentially you're redesigning, you have a new airplane design. It looks uh, like the 750, which grew out of the 701, which was out for many, many years, right, much longer right, than exactly. that. And but it's clearly larger. This is not ex this is not the 750 yeah. airframe with some bigger wings on it or well, something. Well, it, it actually is. Is the, it okay? The, the fuselage itself is a 750. Okay, the rest of this it, is all the same. And it looks larger. Two reasons: number one, because of the bigger wheels and tires, it's sitting higher. I see. Okay, so that's what's fooling looks, me. Then looks beefier. And number two, because of the unpanel the display in here, we took the instrument panel out. It opened up the cabin a lot. So yeah, it, I guess maybe that is part of the visual deception here. If that's what it is it's a good deception uh -huh. but it really opens up the interior of that aircraft enough that it looks like a much bigger aircraft exactly, exactly. without being a bigger without aircraft. being a bigger <laughs> aircraft pretty clever pretty clever you're absolutely right now in the back because we've got a much bigger engine we actually put a rear seat in the back of the cabin area which but, it's uh, experimental so they can do that exactly and uh, you know our, our Stoll CH 750 doesn't have a rear seat in it because it's, it's light sport but the, the space would be there so we, we just redesigned the rear uh, baggage area for the rear seat okay Tell me, before we get to the engine, tell me some more about what other things you did to accommodate. You put a big engine like we're going to talk mm -hmm. about. You have to do some other stuff. You can't just throw a big engine on the on an unaltered airframe. So right. what did you do that changed it? Well, you know, the, the the reason for the bigger engine is to up the gross weight, which is essentially to up, to up the useful load, the, the the hauling capability of the airplane. So to do that, bigger wing because you, you're carrying more on a, on, a, on, a, on the same amount of lift. That doesn't make sense. So you want to increase the size of the wing. So we've added the to the wing span. So how much bigger is it? Uh, three feet additional width on, uh, on, on each side. On each side. Okay, yep. so, so a six foot more it, span. It's a lot, quite, a lot more is wing cord area. Any different? And uh, the cord is actually the same. The cord it's, is the same, so it's yeah. all span that you yeah. added. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, correspondingly, then on the tail, you've got to increase the size of your tail as well because uh, it doesn't make sense to have a, a much larger wing with a smaller tail. So okay. increase the, 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 the span of the tail as well. I can't remember the exact amount of inches, but uh, it's nearly a foot per side. Okay. And then right. a larger rudder. So a substantial give it increase in both wing and yeah, tail plane absolutely. area. Mm -hmm. But the same basic fuselage. The same basic fuselage. Uh, connecting all those mm -hmm. parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, and then on the manufacturing side, uh, again being our latest design, we've 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 made it easier to build, and so it doesn't. Uh, it looks like the same fuselage, but actually we're it's quite a bit different in the sense it's coming off the same CNC tables with more manufacturing that's done, more more final hole size drilling and so forth. So what does this translate to for the builder who says, okay, well I was going to build your some other model of yours. Now I think I like this, so I'm going to do this. How is that going to help him, Sebastian? Well, this is prob her. this is probably the easiest Zenith out there. It's it's a bigger <laughs> yeah, right. it's a bigger airplane, but it's easier to build because so we it's made not, it not really super duty. It's less duty than <laughs> <laughs> if you look at it from that standpoint. We we of course the uh, the duty we're looking at more from the flying uh, hauling capability of the word, That's all. Absolutely. <laughs> well, tell me about the big engine here. I mean, 205 horsepower. What I think about for a Zenith is, wow, that's a lot of power. Yeah, that's a lot of power. You know, a lot of people have been asking about the, you know, putting more power on Zenith and so forth. And then now again with basic med out, we a lot of pilots are saying, well, we don't have to go the light sport route, so let's let's go let's go more the extreme route. And so we we we, we put in the IO375 engine. It's Aerosport out of Canada builds that engine. It's basically an 0360 block and it's got the, the stroker engine with the with the Titan, uh, the ECI Titan uh, heads and so forth on it. So, I see, okay. So it, and then it's got the superior induction system. It's, it's basically, it's a, it's, it's a Lycoming made with aftermarket parts, basically a souped up Lycoming engine. But it's, uh, it works out really well. Um, uh, again, 205 horsepower, it's injected. So it's a fuel injected engine, and um, so it really, really good, good power, and uh, nearly immediate power on for short takeoffs. You know, this airplane about 100 feet. It's airborne. That gross weight. <laughs> Is that right? Wow. Yeah. And 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 tell me about the gross weight numbers and how they and did they change from the 
uh, regular 750? Yeah, well, again, this, this regular 750 being light sport, it's 1,320 pound. We had always designed it a little bit higher at 1,440 pound design gross weight, but with this one, we went up to 1,900 pounds. 1,900, okay. So, quite so a bit you had more. It, so it's not just the wing size, but it's the guts inside yeah, the wing yeah. and, oh, and some other parts uh, of it obviously change higher to get that loading, much higher. Absolutely. And that's then 50% more gross. Oh, so. yeah, that's a lot. So basically, uh, with this bigger engine and the, and the heavier weight of the larger wing, looking at uh, 1,100 pound gross or empty weight, 1,900 pound gross weight, a good 800 pound useful 800 load. 800 pounds of useful. So, and how want, much fuel are you carrying in uh, the aircraft? 50 gallons. 50 20, gallons. 25 gallons per side. Bigger engine, higher fuel burn, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that, the way it goes. That's the way so it goes. So let me explain yeah. something here that you touched on that in, in all the rest of your line, they're not light sport, they're experimental amateur right. built, uh -huh. but a sport pilot can fly them if they meet the light sport parameters, which are 1320 exactly. for exactly. a land plane or 1430 for a seaplane. Mm -hmm. So that limited your weight, not because of the aircraft, but because of what the pilot license would permit using a driver's license in lieu of a medical and that routine that we've become familiar with for light sport. Exactly. Now with the new basic med that uh, EAA and AOPA help push out, uh, those weights don't necessarily have to apply, and yet they can still not have to have the conventional medical. Mm -hmm. There's still some hoops to jump through on that program, so there's still some things they have to do, but this allows them to have a third seat and a bigger engine and higher weights and, and different speeds. Exactly. If they, yep. This airplane's not about going real fast, but they no. could go faster too and things like that. Exactly. Correct? Yep, yep, yep. And so, it, it, you know, as designers, as manufacturers, it, it gives us more ability to, to begin play with the larger engines and so forth as opposed to being under, under the constraints of light sport definition. Well, it seems like it's working for you because to, in order to do this video, we had to shoo some people away. I think yeah. they went inside so you didn't lose anybody. <laughs> we certainly don't want to ever do that, but we did want to talk about it because I saw a crowd around the airplane yeah. and uh, that's very interesting. How has the response been to Super Duty? Oh, it's been excellent. We've been really, really uh, uh, nearly taken aback. We were, weren't expecting as much response. And just from people from all different walks of life, not just people with basic med, light sport people looking at it and so forth. And also the unpaneled display has drawn in a lot of people uh, to look at the airplane. And uh, just, you know, I think we, we're finding more and more uh, you know, with these airplanes, it's not about transportation, it's about the sport, it's about having fun with these airplanes. And the Super Duty, it really accentuates that. You know, you can put a lot of camping gear in the back of the airplane, go places. It's not a fast airplane, but it's a low and slow type flying. But, you know, I flew this uh, down from Missouri, you know. With 11 and what kind of speeds did you see coming down here from Missouri? Consistently about 100 miles through the air, 105 okay. miles per okay. hour. So uh, sort of the speeds of the 750s that preceded yeah, it. Yeah, it's not much faster, you know, being, being a... Because being a you proportionally sized it. Exactly. It's yeah. You got more lift, but that also means more drag in that respect. But a bigger engine, so you're just pushing more through the air. Yeah, sure. And sure. Uh, but again, the nice thing is it's it's real easy to fly and low stall speed. Pretty much any pasture is is a runway with this airplane, so it just makes it a lot more fun. Cool. And like I mentioned earlier, it's it's really an advanced kit with the final hole size match drilling. So we're doing a lot more at the factory on this kit. So for us, it's a it's a major accomplishment I think for us to be able to. to so produce that should this bring level down the kit. build times. So and that's a, absolutely. Uh, we're looking probably uh, we're we're guesstimating out about 300 hours on the airframe really? for kit. the Super Duty. And for the Super Duty, okay. and there's, there's more rivets and more parts in our previous models, but because of the, the more advanced manufacturing, uh, the the rudder kits that we've been doing here on the Super Duty, it's about two and a half hour job to put it together is that and right? uh, so again compared to prior to that it was taking about 10 hours to build a rudder so okay well there's it, a good it, example right there definitely cutting substantial down substantial reduction yeah. in time invested to get to the airplane that you want absolutely well very interesting um let's ask you for some more information about where we find you on the web so people can follow up and ask some more about either the unpanel or the super duty or the rest of your growing line well we have a very comprehensive website zenithair.com uh come out and look at more information, the specs, performance numbers, prices, and so forth. Happy to share that information.